Hey everyone, this series is about solar energy. I will be introducing you to several different technologies for converting sunlight into energy, as well as their applications. The first technology I will discuss is photovoltaics, which is also the most widely known. Photovoltaic systems convert sunlight directly into electricity using the photoelectric effect. The fact that they produce nothing but electricity makes them most useful for lighting, computers, and telecommunications. They have a whole host of other uses as well. The two main materials used for photovoltaic panels are crystalline silicon and polymer. While silicon panels are very efficient at generating electricity and last a long time, they are heavy, rigid, delicate, and expensive. Despite their greatly reduced efficiency, polymers are light, cheap, flexible, and can be printed like newspapers. Silicon panels often find use in remote or static applications where consistent remote energy is vital, such as in space. They are also incorporated into architecture and are used commercially by some wealthy and middle-class people. Polymers can be used practically everywhere, on cars, boats, airplanes, anywhere you can think of. Many people increase the cost-effectiveness of their solar systems by using solar concentrators, like parabolic mirrors and Fresnel lenses. This technique requires a heliostat and actuators for tracking the sun. It is very common to use the sun's light for producing heat. This is called solar thermal energy and has a very broad range of uses, whether for heating water, cooking food, heating and cooling our homes, or running a Stirling engine for producing electricity. Solar thermal energy has advantage over photovoltaics in certain areas. Solar-powered Stirling engines that use hydrogen as an energy transfer medium have the highest energy output per area of any solar technology. Stirling engines run on the thermal expansion and contraction of gases. By using a heatsink such as cold water, you can significantly increase the work output of the system. Thus, if you use cold enough water, you can do more work than is possible with sunlight alone. A lesser known thermal energy technology is thermoacoustics. This technology uses a temperature difference across the resonating chamber to produce a sound which is converted into electricity via the same mechanisms used in an ordinary loudspeaker. It is less efficient than a Stirling engine, but requires little to no moving parts. Thus it can be made smaller, lighter, cheaper, and more reliable than other thermal technologies. Another innovative way to harness the sun's energy is by growing photosynthetic microorganisms, such as algae and cyanobacteria, to produce oil. This can be done using an open pond system or a closed photobioreactor. It has some limitations though. An open pond system may be cheap and easy to set up, but is subject to low and unpredictable yields and has a high risk of contamination. A photobioreactor can stabilize environmental factors, dramatically improve yields, and eliminate the risk of contamination. But these systems require plumbing systems that are expensive to run and maintain. Despite these liabilities, however, the payoff is tremendous. Photosynthetic microorganisms are the most productive creatures on the planet. They can produce over 80 times more oil per acre than the next highest producing crop. They can fixate their own nitrogen and grow in wastewater that isn't suitable for irrigation. Additionally, they can be genetically modified to produce virtually any organic compound, including diesel, gasoline, kerosene, alcohol, sugar, proteins, drugs, hydrogen gas, dimethyl sulfenopropanate, and plastic. The number of ways in which we can harness the sun's energy is phenomenal. Chemists are successfully mimicking photosynthesis. Businesses are using fiber optics to bring natural sunlight indoors. Researchers at MIT have developed a new type of solar concentrator that uses organic dye to concentrate light at the edges of a sheet of glass. This allows us to turn any window into a solar panel. With all of these technologies, creative people, and willpower, we will be able to become more sustainable and create more opportunities for everyone, especially for the young and people of the third world. Solar energy isn't the solution for all the world's problems, but it can help a great deal. The best thing we can do is use it.